Reefs provide more than food. They also provide protection. Hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones form over the tropical ocean, sometimes doing serious damage when they make landfall. Reefs dissipate waves' energy, reducing wave height and slowing the water before it crashes into the shore. Scientists created a computer simulation to understand how this works. So how do we do this? It's a 12-step program in three parts. First, identifying the hazard, understanding the role of coral reef ecosystems in reducing that hazard, and then quantifying the consequences. We compute different storm return interval conditions, the 10-year, the 50, the 100, and the 500-year storm conditions. And we do that all along all 3,100 kilometers of coastline. And then what we do is we model the flooding, and we do that under two sets of conditions. We do it with the current reefs, and then we model if reef degradation occurs. So we run our flood models with the current reefs and then with these future theoretical de degraded reefs. So then we can quantify that area protected by the reefs for different storm intervals and we can quantify that in very high precision, specifically at 10 square meter intervals along all 3,100 kilometers U.S. shoreline. So what have we found? U.S. coral reefs provide over $1.8 billion of protection annually. They protect over 18,000 people from flooding annually, and over $5 billion are protected for the 100-year storm. Basically, those losses would double if the coral reefs were degraded. Across the U.S., coral reefs are struggling. But the good news is that they can recover, particularly if we find the resources to help manage them better. This new study, by helping to quantify the benefits of coral reefs, can help us find the opportunities to fund the needed conservation and restoration. We can use these results to help inform the recovery spending after the hurricanes from 2017. That represents $100 billion in funds that could be used to help restore and recover our national natural defenses. These results can be found in the recent report led by UCSC and USGS at the links below.